everybody. I'm Matthew Alaria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we'll get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we ask you today for revelation of your Word. We ask you today for grace and help to receive your Word, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives. And Father, I release my faith today over everybody watching the broadcast. Lord, I thank you for ministering to them today right where they are, showing them what they need to see, saying to them what they need to hear. I thank you for strengthenings on the inside of them today. I thank you for making deposits in their heart today and helping them in any way that they may need help. Father, I do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, a few episodes back on the broadcast, we started a series that we're calling the significance of your words. And this will be the fifth and final teaching in this series. And so friend, if you've missed any of the teachings, you can go back to mam.tv. You can watch there. You can download the notes of the broadcast. You can also go back to YouTube or Facebook and watch the broadcast there. And if you've missed any of these broadcasts, I'd encourage you to go back and watch because the Lord has really been stirring us up about the significance of our words. We also have a book uh, called Faith Declarations. And uh, in that book, you will find things that you can speak over just about every area of your life. And that book's available to you at no charge. And so if you'd like us to send one to you, mail you one, uh, you can find that on mam.tv. You can request your copy. You can also download a digital copy uh, on the website as well. And again, that's no charge. And so if you've been getting stirred up about the power of your words, but you don't really know what to start or where to start or what to say about your life, uh, that book will be a big help to you to get you started on the right track. Praise the Lord. Let's go over to Proverbs 18, 21, and let's look at our foundation text there again. Proverbs 18, 21 says this, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, we learned on the broadcast so far that what we say affects our lives. That what we say is what our lives are going to be filled with. Um, what we say affects the kind of life that we live, that we enjoy, that we experience. Our words affect our lives. Now, James 3 talked about how our tongue is like a rudder on the ship. It's like a bit in the horse's mouth. It's like a spark of a fire. And the revelation there was our words can appear to be insignificant, small, not important. But the reality is they are powerful beyond measure. And our words uh, control something big. They control our lives and what we experience and what we enjoy in our lives. And so we have to get past the appearance of words to the natural mind. They don't appear significant. They don't appear important. But in reality, words are very significant. Words are very powerful. Words are very important. And this verse here is telling us that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death, we learned, are forces. Life is a force that works to strengthen and prosper. Death is a force that works to weaken and decay and destroy. And so the words that I choose to speak will put these forces to work. If I speak good words, words that are in line with God's words, that puts the force of life to work. If I speak bad words, words that are in opposition to God's words, that'll put the force of death to work. And this is why my words affect my life. And this is why my words are so significant, because they put these forces to work. Now, we don't just need to major on the bad side of this. Oh, I got to watch what I say. I don't want to hurt myself with my words. We found out last time on the broadcast that we can use our words for our own good. Jesus taught us that we could use our words just like he used his words. 
And so, friend, I want to encourage you again. We, we closed out last broadcast by encouraging you this. But if you're facing something in, li in life right now, if you're facing a challenge or having a problem in your family or maybe having problems with your kids or on the job, get your words to work and put your words to work for you and for your good because when you do, you release that force of life and that force of life will strengthen, it will prosper, it'll turn situations around, praise the Lord. Now, let's read this verse again, that uh, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so your words are a life or death issue, something very serious, something very powerful, something very weighty. Now, because life and death are in the power of the tongue, you and I need to be very cautious and very guarded with our words. Proverbs 21, 23 says this, whoso keeps his mouth keeps his soul from troubles. Proverbs 13, 3 says that this, he that keeps his mouth keeps his life, but he that opens wide his lips shall have destruction. And so friend, we need to keep our mouths. We need to watch what we say. We need to be guarded about what we say. And we need to be careful with our words because life and death is in the power of the tongue. In Proverbs 13, 3, in the Good News Bible, it says, A careless talker destroys himself. And so because our words are so powerful, we need to be careful with our words. And we need to make sure that when we speak, we're saying what we want to say, something that's going to help us and not hurt us. You see, many are not careful with their words because they don't believe that their words are a life or death issue. They believe words are just words. It doesn't really matter what I say. It's not a big deal. And so therefore, they don't keep their mouth. They're not guarded about what they say. You know, people who are trained in firearms, one of the things that uh, they are trained in is safety. And if you know somebody that's well-trained in firearms, they take that gun very seriously. Um, they handle it very cautiously. Why? Because they know once I pull the trigger, I can't get that bullet back. And that bullet can take somebody's life. And so I need to be very cautious. And our words are this way. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so we need to keep watch and keep guard over our mouths. And if we are going to shoot from our mouths, that's fine. Let's just make sure that we're shooting life out and that the words we say are going to accomplish something good that we want to accomplish and not something bad that we don't want to accomplish. Keep your mouth and keep your life, the scripture says. And so when you believe words are life or death, one way that it shows up is I'm very watchful about what I say, praise the Lord. Um, go with me to Proverbs chapter 12, and let's look at verse 18 there. Now, every day, in every situation, in every area of your life, every word you speak works to either help you or hurt you. I want to say it to you again. Every day, in every situation, in every area of your life, every word you speak works to either help you or hurt you. Words can help, words can hurt. Proverbs 12, 18 says this, there is that speaks like the piercings of the sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. There are words that hurt, there are words that help. That's what that scripture is saying. You can speak words that pierce, that destroy, that hurt. You can speak words um, uh, that are health and help and healing. And friend, this goes for every area of your life. You can speak words about your kids that hurt, that pierce, that tear down. 
You can speak words about your marriage, about your finances, about your body that pierce, that hurt, that tear down, that have effect in that way, that bring destruction. Or you can speak words that bring victory, that bring health, that bring something good. Um, Proverbs 18.7 says this, A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The easy to read version says this, Fools hurt themselves when they speak. Their own words trap them. Friend, you can hurt yourself with your own words. And so you need to be cautious about what you say. Don't talk about how broken down your body is. Don't talk about how you never have enough money. Don't talk about how you can't afford this or you can't afford that. Don't talk negatively about your kids. Even when they're wild and acting crazy, speak the peace of God over your kids. Why? Because a fool hurts himself. Fools hurt themselves, the scripture says, when they speak. Their own words trap them. I mean, you already have a devil out there that's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. You got people that are against you. You don't want to use your own words against yourself too. No, no, your words can hurt you. Your words can help you. We want to speak words that help us and not hurt us. Praise God. Um, the CEV of Proverbs 18, 7 says this, saying foolish things is like setting a trap to destroy yourself. The expanded Bible says the words of fools will ruin them. Proverbs 10, 14 says the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The easy to read of that verse says fools talk and bring destruction on themselves. I like the new living. It says the babbling of a fool invites disaster. And so you can speak words that bring bad. You can speak words that bring good. Proverbs 13, 2 says, a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. I like the complete Jewish Bible. A man enjoys good as a result of what he says. You can say good and enjoy good because of it, or you can say bad and bring destruction and hurt down on yourself. And so what? What does that mean? That means I need to keep my mouth and be very cautious about what I say. Now, knowing that our words are so powerful and that we need to be careful with our words, I want to give you, I believe it is, uh, let's see, six things, six principles to help you keep your mouth six principles of governing your speech the right way. And the first one is this, spare your words or be sparing with your words. We might say it like this, talk less and say less. You know, if we're going to be careful with our words, we need to be sparing with our words. Proverbs 17, 27 in the King James Bible says this, he that has knowledge spares his words. The Amplified Bible says, restrains and is careful with his words. CV says, it makes a lot of sense to be a person of few words. My words are very powerful. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Um, I can speak and bring bad upon myself. I can speak and bring good to myself. And so I'm going to be sparing with my words. I'm not just going to say anything and say everything and say a bunch of junk. I'm going to be sparing. I'm going to say less. I'm going to be restrained and careful. Now notice the verse says that he that has knowledge spares his words. And so if you're smart, you don't just talk all the time and say a bunch of stuff. Uh, Proverbs 10, 19 says this, in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. What's that mean? When you're talking a bunch, you're going to be sinning. You're going to be making a lot of mistakes. Uh, the rest of that verse says, but he that refrains his lips is wise. The voice translation says, if you're wise, you'll speak less and with restraint. The CV says, you will say the wrong thing if you talk too much. 
So be sensible and watch what you say. And so friend, number one, in, in being careful with your words, just talk less. You and I don't have to be talking all the time. We don't have to say something about everything that we see or experience. We don't have to give our thoughts about every situation that we encounter or give our opinion on what other people do. Just talk less. And why would you do that? Because you realize life and death are in the power of my tongue. And so knowing that, I'm going to be very uh, cautious about what I say. And immediately, I, I'm going to say less. Uh, police officers have to file a report. I, I believe this is true. Um, if they even unholster their weapon and point it at somebody and don't shoot, that has to be in the report. Why? Because death is in the power of that gun. And so they're very uh, particular. <laughs> they don't just go to work every day and start shooting at people, shooting guns all over the place. No, shoot less and, and speak less. That'll help you to be careful with your words, number one. Number two is be slow to speak. James 1.19 says this, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, let every man be slow to, slow to speak and slow to wrath. It said be quick to hear and slow to speak. And so don't be quick to just open up your mouth and start venting your thoughts and your feelings. Friend, if you do that, you're going to make a mistake. You're going to say the wrong thing and you could say something that would bring death and destruction upon yourself. And so think before you speak. That's a revelation, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, slow down. Slow down. Check inside. What's God leading me to say right now? Um, what does the Word say about this that's in front of me right now? I'm going to be slow here. I want to make sure that I, I, I give myself time to choose my words right. And so be slow to speak. This will help you to be careful with your words. Um, praise God. Proverbs 29, 20 says this, Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. More hope for a fool than a man that's hasty in his words. What that means, friend, is if you are quick to speak, you don't stand a chance and you're going to have a bunch of problems because you're going to say a bunch of stuff that brings destruction on yourself. So number one, be, be sparing with your words. Say less. And number two, be slower to speak. Number three is this, be selective about what you say. Proverbs 29, 11 says, a fool utters all his mind, but a wise man keeps it till afterwards. The, uh, God's word translation says this, a fool expresses all of his emotions. The ISV says the fool vents all his feelings, but a wise person, the wise person keeps them to himself. I like the Passion Translation. It says this, you can recognize fools by the way they give full vent to their rage and let their words fly. But the wise bite their tongues and hold back all they could say. And so you can see here that a fool is going to say just anything, but a wise person is selective about what they say. Selective. What does that mean? That means that I don't just say anything and everything, but I choose my words purposefully. I know that life and death is in the power of my tongue, I know I can speak words that hurt me, bring destruction. I know I can speak words that help me and bring good. And so as a result, I'm very selective about what I say. Oh, uh, That's uh, number three. Number one, spare your words. Number two, be slow to speak. Number, number three, be selective about what you say. And then I like number four. It goes with number three. Be measured with your words. Proverbs 17, 27 in the Wyclef version says this, He that measures his words is wise. 
Easy to read says, intelligent people choose their words carefully. Uh, Proverbs 10, 19 in the Message Bible says, the wise measure their words. And so be measured with your words. What does measured mean? Uh, see which words fit this situation. And so, for instance, let's say that you have some symptoms of anxiety and depression. Um, if you walk around every day talking about how anxious and depressed you are, talking about your anxiety and your depression, talking about how um, your mom had it and you have it and you just don't know if you're ever going to get free from it, talking like that, um, measuring your words like that, friend, that is not going to help you. That's not going to help you in your situation. And so let's measure. You have symptoms of anxiety and depression. Let's measure which words fit here that'll help you and minister life to you and bring good. Which words would do that would be these words. I have the peace of God that passes all understanding. I have the joy of the Holy Ghost working in me right now. I refuse to let my heart be troubled. I refuse to let it be afraid. I refuse to let it be uh, to be depressed. I refuse to be anxious. I refuse to be sorrowful. I refuse to be fearful. I have Jesus' peace. I have his joy. It's working in me right now. I'm coming up out of this depression. I'm coming up out of this anxiety. I'm coming out of this sorrow and this fear. And I am coming into the joy of the Lord and the peace of God like I never have before. Praise God. Friend, that's measuring my words. See, I'm, I'm being selective about what I say, and I'm going to put words in there that fit, words that are going to produce good, words that are going to minister life to me. Those are words that fit. If you want victory, talking about your anxiety and depression doesn't fit in that room. You need to remeasure your words. Measure your words um, to fit victory and success and good and where you want to go and then be measured and speak those words. Praise God. So what was number one? Number one was be sparing with your words. Just talk less. Number two was be slow to speak. Number three was be selective about what you say. Number four is to be measured with your words. Number five is to be purposeful with your words. Speak to accomplish. Speak with purpose. These words are going to accomplish something. And so I'm going to speak to accomplish. I'm going to speak for effect. I want to be free from anxiety and depression. And so I'm going to speak words that will accomplish that in my life. Proverbs 15, 28 says, uh, The heart of the righteous studies to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. What is the mouth, the heart of the righteous? It studies to answer. It's the mouth of the wicked that just pours out evil. So the righteous person, he's going to study, he's going to ponder before he speaks. Why? Because he's going to be purposeful with his words. The New Living Translation says, the heart of the godly thinks carefully before speaking. And so friend, be purposeful with your words and speak to accomplish Speak to get stuff done. In Isaiah 55, um, the, the Lord said that my words will not return unto me void, but they will accomplish that which I please. See, God speaks to get stuff done. Friend, we should be the same way. Be purposeful. Speak to get stuff done. You want your kids to do better in school and act right? Speak to get that done. You want your marriage to be better? Speak in a way that's going to get that done. You want to come up to another level financially? Speak words that are going to produce that. Be purposeful with your words. Praise God. So number one was be sparing with your words. Number two was be slow to speak. Number three, be selective about what you say. Be measured with your words. Number four, you want words that fit into a life of victory. So measure and fit, fit to get words that fit into that kind of life. Number five, be purposeful with your words. And then number six is be especially on guard about what you say when you're under pressure. See, the power of words isn't suspended just because you're upset or just because you're under attack or under pressure. 
A lot of people get under pressure and get under attack and they just start spewing evil stuff. And when you're under pressure and, and adversity is squeezing upon you, it's uh, easier at that time to say something that you shouldn't say. And so when you're under pressure, you need to be especially cautious about what you say because the power of words aren't suspended in that moment. And under pressure, when you're under attack and when you're under pressure, by being slow to speak and selective with your words and measured with your words and purposeful with your words, under pressure, God can give you words to speak that will totally shift the whole situation. And so when you're under pressure, uh, be particularly cautious about what you say. The uh, Passion Translation in, in Proverbs 17, 27 says, can you bridle your tongue when your heart is under pressure? That's how you show you are wise. And so when you're under pressure, be especially on guard about what you say. Now, friend, why would we do this? Why would we be sparing with our words? Why would we be slow to speak? Um, why would we be selective and measured and purposeful with our words? Why would we be extra cautious when we're under pressure? Because we know that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And because we know that and believe that, this leads us to being slower and being selective and being purposeful and being measured about what we say. And so as we go forward in the coming days, friend, I'd encourage you to lay hold of those six principles and be very cautious with your words. And when you get ready to say something, make sure that you're saying what you want to have happen in your life. Make sure you're saying something that's going to bring good to you. And when you do know that's what you want to say, let it go and say it and believe that what you say God is going to bring to pass. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for helping us to gain concept about the power and the significance of our words. Lord, we, help, we ask you to help us in the coming days, in the days ahead, to be selective with our words and help us to say things and speak words that are going to bring good into our lives and Lord, we put a watch over our mouth today. We're going to keep our mouths. And Lord, we're asking you to help us to not speak evil and to not speak bad and to not speak words that bring destruction into our lives. And Father, we do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching the broadcast these past five episodes. I believe the Lord has really helped us to gain concept of the significance of of our words and I believe that you're gonna start using your words in your life in a way that you never have before and you're gonna see your words have impact and get you into a place of victory praise the Lord now hey don't forget to come back next time for the next episode of our faith for life broadcast we'll see you then thank you for watching the faith for life broadcast Go to mam.tv to download the free study notes from today's broadcast. You can also request your free copy of our mini book, Faith Declarations. In this book, you'll find declarations from the Word of God that will feed your faith and help you experience victory in your life. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. In this life, we will encounter challenges, but through the Word of God, we can experience victory over every challenge. In Matthew's book, Victory in Troubled Times, he gives us five keys to experience victory in the midst of adversity. Order your copy today at mam.tv or on Amazon. Today's broadcast was made possible by the partners of Matthew Alaria Ministries and the members of North Smoke Church. Go to mam.tv to become a partner today and help us take the message of faith to this generation.